and welcome to the part zero of my 2024 F1 season simulation. Here in this video, I'm going to explain how the process works. Obviously, everything around it, so you get the idea of what's going to happen. The season begins in 59 days from this time of recording, so I plan to upload like one Grand Prix episode every two days around that. It can differ depending on how much time I got, obviously. Uh, so yeah, hopefully it can finish by the time the pre-season testing takes place, which should be one week ahead of the barring Grand Prix, if I remember correctly, so hopefully that can work. Anyway, um, I'm gonna begin with the pre-season itself, where I'm, I am right now, because uh, I haven't started the thing yet. It starts with obviously the performance. Uh, performance of each car is set by me and my two colleagues, uh, Ajax and Levanana, which we are the we're the trio doing the F1 content on my channel. Anyway, uh, we set up the, the car performance for uh, for the season, and basically every team is gonna get from zero to five bigger upgrades throughout the entire season, which is done by RNG. Obviously, uh, I'm gonna explain it later. Uh, so there's a chance to get either 0, 1, 2, 4, or two, up to 5 bigger upgrades. Um, I'm gonna space them out throughout the season, personally, so I don't have like to deal with all the bigger upgrades being like in the final 5 races of the season or something like that. Like, so I can fight the unrealisticness of this. So yeah, a free let's say three upgrades for uh for each season well i'm gonna space them out so when is out like uh race five second one should be like race 10 and so on so basically giving like uh spacing out so it's more realistic uh it basically has three spins uh i'm not gonna explain it itself how this uh i'm gonna like explain fully how the wheel works basically uh a spinning wheel where it, just uh, get the amount of upgrades quicker. I have, everything, I have everything set up for years now. I haven't used it before, so uh, use, haven't used it in a, in a video before. But I, hopefully, it can work. I'm gonna perfect it to point. Uh, it has those realistic chances. Everything is tip top. Yeah. Uh, basically, the wheel has a kind of chance to upgrade a uh, so singular part of the car. But has a chance also to give another upgrade. So, basically, one wheel spin can become two wheel spins. So basically, there's a very small chance of the happening uh, of that happening. Basically, uh, there's also a chance of the upgrade not being uh, being not working. Essentially, giving uh, the car a zero second boost. Essentially, so yeah, it can work either way. Um, it comes to the weather. Weather is a it's an interesting concept in my simulation because I honestly do like wet or dry conditions, but I I, I think I, will, I should rename the wet conditions to like changeable conditions because when when it's like wet, really wet, we're not even driving. We just red flag the race and wait for it to go to enters and and things like that. So here, wet conditions essentially means inter slash changeable conditions. Uh, I'm gonna explain it later how it how it works as well. Basically, uh, there's a set chance of it happening for every session or for every single race. Um, for example, Austria can have a 40% chance of uh, rain happening in a session, and for example, Bahrain can have a 0.01%. I made those numbers up. Obviously, I don't have them uh, ready yet because I have to think about them. I have to go over the data and how frequent the rain is for every single. Grand Prix we have this year, there are 24, so it's gonna take a bit. Um, for the chaos aspect, I want some races to be like pure, pure craziness, like we saw in, for example, Singapore, uh, Zandvoort, like those races which are the most exciting races in the entire season. There's like a 10% chance of every session and uh, in every race of this happening. It's not like something absolutely crazy but it affects the affects the results quite a lot in quality it gives one to three drivers uh minus one or 
up to minus 1.5 second debuff, essentially uh, ruining their quality and increases for every chance, increases the driver error chance for every driver by 15%, which is pretty significant. We will get to later on for every race, obviously, same driver chance with every driver going up uh, up to five positions and down up to five positions as well. So that can cause a lot of chaos, especially in race order. Um, yeah, going to the race weekend itself. Uh, there are separate upgrade sessions for each race weekend. Basically, there's a one wheel spin for every single team for every single race weekend. But that wheel spin kind of happen, uh, kind of happen to be even more wheel spins as, as I said earlier. The wheel spin has a chance to become two. And when it comes to my simulations, there's a lot. Uh, there's a big chance that McLaren suddenly become good because for some reason. They always have the the best RNG, making the wheel spin like five wheel spins, and then they get a massive upgrade. That was my first concept of this 2024 simulation, so that's what happened there. I was I'm gonna start a new one right now with these settings. So hopefully we're gonna be more realistic. I'll try to set up the wheel so uh, it can mitigate all the craziness, uh, obsessive craziness that can happen. Obviously, I wanna I wanna have the chance of craziness is still happening um yeah it's basically rng uh, it can give you uh singular upgrade no upgrade uh or man multiple upgrades every single upgrade has like a chance of giving a random number of uh raw pace advantage uh i think it should vary from i don't, I don't have it set up yet but it should vary from zero seconds basically essentially give it no uh, pace advantage to like 0 0.3 or 0 0.5. I'm gonna decide on that later. Basically, one upgrade meaning up to a half a second advantage in race itself, a uh, ra uh, race of uh, pace itself. So, yeah. Um, this this also means that there can be a team without any upgrades in the entire season, but there's a, a very very little chance of that happening. Basically, you have to. You'd have to get zero billion upgrades and no upgrades the entire season for the wheel speed, which is almost impossible. So, yeah, it's gonna be like. Uh... Also, I'm gonna probably remove the small upgrades towards the end of the season. I'm gonna announce where the when the teams are essentially switching the next season. Real uh, realistically, they would uh, switch of uh, whatever whatever five to ten races before the season ends. Unless they're in a title fight, but yeah. Okay. Uh, when it comes to the quality or sprint quality, sprint quality is a new thing that I'm gonna include in my in the simulation because I've never done sprint quality before. So hopefully it's gonna work. I'm just gonna do it the same way. Uh, basically, it's gonna be just quality, but called sprint quality. I hope it's not too bad because basically it's just the quality in real life but it's a bit shorter but I don't know how to set up that it's shorter and having it included in the chances and so on um all right for every session there's a st standard public process which basically uh makes makes up the the, the pace basically the quality pace of each driver uh from each car and gives them a random modifier of 0. Uh, minus 0 0.3 seconds or plus 0 0.3 seconds or pretense. Um, the pace modifier is uh, for a specific driver. Basically, uh, every driver has a set amount of uh, quality pace and race pace that's gonna uh, vary from driver to driver. For example, uh, obviously, you probably could have guessed it that Max Verstappen has the best pace modifier. So, obviously, even if if uh, his R new modifier is mirror my is plus 0 0.3 this is essentially the bad thing you want a faster lap time so you want don't want the plus 0 0.3 let's say max has has 0 0.3 uh rng modifier but still probably is faster than for example perez who is naturally uh way slower when when it comes to the better pace modifier um perez should be like 3.5 to 4 tenths uh, in both quality and race pace in terms of the pace modifier itself. So essentially, what will need to happen? Uh, Max will need to have a very big, uh, very bad 
RNG modifier and Perez would need to have a very good modifier to auto qualify him or to have a better race pace. Which, you know, according to the 2023 season is very unrealistic and so here chances are very low as well. Uh, because the wet conditions, same applies to the race, uh, it basically doubles, so it can vary uh, twice as much, so basically can, the drivers can get up to 0.6 seconds uh, buff or debuff uh, because to the, their pace or RNG modifier. So yeah, um, also there's a set, of, set amount of pace modifier for the weather conditions themselves, obviously. Uh, those matter as much as the pace modifier itself. It's not like only the wet conditions modifier matters here. So basically, if you have a good quality quality uh, number and a good weather conditions number, that's where you have the best chance to do well. And when you have just a, quali a good good quality number and not as good weather conditions, or vice versa, you have a bad quality quality number but good weather conditions number. Um, it's not as good if you have it balanced out. So yeah, that's for a standard play process. When it comes to the driver errors for Kupoli, there's the 2% plus NMR, which essentially means no mistake ratio that I have a set of number for each driver. Basically, that's their awareness stat of uh, the F1 game, for example. Their chance of doing an error or crashing into another driver, basically, it is a set of preset number that I gave every single driver according to, well, my opinion. Um, I'm not going to download anything or uh, ask anyone uh, as this is my scene. I'm going to take this aspect of uh, my opinion into it. Um, obviously, drivers like Verstappen is going to have way less of a chance to have this number. Well, well this number for Verstappen is going to be way smaller. And for Perez, so basically Perez is going to have a much bigger chance of having a driver error than Max Verstappen, which is realistic, you know. When it comes to the driver error, if they happen to get the, uh, the driver error, which is uh, from 0 to up to 3, basically there don't have to be any driver errors, but if there's, there is one, it basically comes to this. There's a 50% red flag chance. I'm gonna uh, explain how the red flag works later on. Uh, there's also a 50% chance of no time for the setup driver. Um, there's also a 50% chance of getting a minus one second up, uh, up to minus 0 0.2 seconds uh, debuff for the driver. Basically, if you just make an error, there's no red flag and you just went off you get like a half a second debuff, oh, this is RNG, so I half a second is a major number as well. And there's also a 50% chance of not participating in the next session, so if you get a driver in Q1, there's a 50% chance that you can uh, not participate in Q2, for example. Basically, if you, if you go off, uh, lose like half a second, for example, in this one, and damage your floor, uh, you may not participating in Q2, for example. These are all just examples. Obviously, it's going to be uh, way more complicated than that. Um, okay. Lady lap times, obviously, this will vary across the circuits, because obviously, uh, circuits like Austria are way more uh, lead lap time prone than, for example, Baku. You know, Baku has pretty much no uh, track limit violations because it's just walls everywhere, so there's going to be a set amount of chance for each circuit to have these little lap times. Obviously the the standard or the the standard number which is going to deviate according to each circuit is 5 per chance for a new driver, which is quite a lot, but when you, when you think about it, there's a lot of little lap times over most of the circuits on the calendar, so having 5% chance for every driver it's not as much as it may seem. Obviously, every single driver is going to get through with a 5% chance to... Yeah, there's a 5% chance, chance for every single driver. So if uh, there's 5% chance for Max, uh, obviously it's going to... I'm probably going to add the no mystery ratio to this one probably as well, but it's really difficult because some, some drivers crash, crash like way more but 
they get the same amount of lap times bleeding as other drivers. So I don't want to include that NMR, uh, NMR number in this one. So I'm going to probably stick with this as there are a lot of drivers who struggle with track limits and it does include the best drivers as well. So it would be unfair to, for me to get a number for this one as well. So every every tra every driver should have their own, uh, not their own, uh, the average chance. So no driver is in an advantage here. Every driver has their, uh, has the own, sorry, has the same chance for the little lap time. Um, when it comes to the result, so 0 0.5 up to no chance of, well, uh, how this works is there's a 50% chance of no time and 50% chance of getting 0 0.5 to 0. What this means is that if you get no time, this doesn't apply. If you get, if you get this, this doesn't apply. So when it comes to the, the number that comes from this when it comes to the uh, setup quality session if you got like 0 0.2 debuff to your to your time of the driver's time you basically don't have to get, get to the no time and if you get no chance of getting this debuff you essentially uh, get your lap time deleted and you have no time whatsoever during the entire session so basically this means you get lead a lap time for for both of your runs because I assume most quality sessions have two runs per driver on average. That's the that's a casual number. Basically you have the have the run at the start of a session and then one another run at the end of a session. So this basically means you have just one of those lap times deleted and this one means basically both of your times deleted or um you just go out once, get your lap time deleted, and then as a red flag or something like that. We're gonna get to that later. All right. Okay. Rel reliability issues. This. Uh, sorry, this should go on. Two per chance, two percent chance for every single driver. I'm only gonna add the real reliability aspect of each car into this one because it would be too complicated to do. As I'm gonna give every single team a level playing field. Basically, they're gonna have a the same same percentage chance of getting a reliability issue that can vary from three percent and three percent chance of basically the same thing as here. But there's also a 50% chance of not participating in the next session. Basically, if you get a reliability issue and you lose half a second in your first one, uh, you may not participate in the next session. This doesn't apply to just one of them. If it's basically the same thing as here, you either get one or two, but this uh, still a 50% chance of getting this when it comes to getting this and or this. So. If you get this, there's a 50% chance of getting this, but 0% chance of getting this. And if you get this, that's the same. 0% 0. 0 chance of getting this, and 50% chance of getting this, so that's how it works. Now we go to the race or sprint race itself. The, this is a bit more complicated as, uh, obviously, the race itself is going to be the, the more important session. We start with the reliability issues. Uh, I set it to 5% chance for every driver, uh, basically, I think 2% for quality is, uh, much more reasonable, uh, than having a 5% chance for both quality and race. I think race should have a m bigger number, essentially, you're running more, uh, more track time, and, yeah, generally a bigger chance of having a reliability issue during the race than during quality. So as it's five percent, obviously there are zero point uh, zero two three uh, drivers that can be affected by it. So either no or one two three. That's some amount of percentage chance for that. Uh, when it comes to uh, okay, I should explain that the other way. If you if the with three drivers, except imagine the first three drivers getting the five percent chance being that unlucky. There are no more reliability issues for other drivers. Basically, the, the 
the, in the moment the third driver gets a reliability issue, uh, no more can get it. Basically, it's zero point uh, zero two three is three is the maximum the number of reliability, reliability issues. It's the same for driver every single leaving left times. This is where it's like this. Um, when it comes to reliability issues in the race, there is a thirty percent chance of getting a debuff on your pace. Minus the uh, this should be plus actually. Um, Yeah, I'm gonna do uh, fix this real quick. I didn't think about when I was creating this. Uh, what is basically this means that it's a first thirty percent chance of getting a debuff your on your time. I'm gonna fix it for the others. Basically, this as well is is basically uh, increases your lap time, not shrinks. Uh, if you didn't understand it, it just uh, makes your lap time worse. So I'm gonna fix it to the. Uh, the plus instead of minus, uh, which is a minor inconvenience that I just uh, found out. Yep, this uh, she was getting up to half a second to no, well, there's a little chance of getting no, there's a one and a 500 chance, but there's still a chance of getting no uh, penalty for reliability shooting the race. There's also a penalty percent of a cheap chance of DNF, which essentially means you're going out of the session. Um, yep. Basically, either of those apply if you get the 5% chance for each driver. And there's also a 20% chance of BSC, 20% chance of safety car, and 20% chance of a red flag. So, how this works is gonna, I'm gonna run it through the 20% chance thingy every single time. It's not just uh, gonna have a combined 60% chance of this happening. No, I'm gonna run it uh, through first time 20% chance for BSC no BSC okay I'm gonna do the safety car um, there's a safety car 20% chance uh, main safety car so yeah the safety car is in I'm gonna do the both the red flag there's a red flag as well there are, then the both the safety car and the red flag are applied we're gonna display later later driver errors up to three as well two plus NMR number that I explained earlier is the same thing Except here is the 60% chance of damage, which is essentially the same buff as uh, reliability issue. 40% of the chance of DNF is a bit lower, because uh, I think drivers are generally uh, more sustainable to actually make the driver <laughs> still drive the car in the race. Maybe I should increase the damage, I'm gonna still think about it, maybe I'll increase it to up to one second, or for reliability issues I should increase it maybe as well. Uh, I'm probably gonna do it, but this is just an example of how it's gonna be. Um, and there's also a 20% chance of affecting another random driver. Basically, the the another driver that's gonna be getting affected by this, if they're affected, they're gonna go through this one as well. So they have a 60% chance of damage and 40% chance of DNF. Uh, this random driver is picked completely randomly through the field, basically does have to be a driver close to them because you know when it happens uh situations like this when a driver pits he's at the back of the field and crashes like lowest lona sergeant those things that happen that can happen and obviously you can crash with the driver up front as well if they pit and they're like behind you basically there's a there's a chance of getting uh affecting random driver from the field doesn't matter if they're close to you uh close to the driver and uh in the starting grid or the race results. Um, also the papers as a BSC, FD car and the red flag as same as here, same, same as here. So get to do getting the fastest lap. This is the standard uh, fastest lap process that I improved over my last spreadsheets or my last simulations. Uh, there's the race pace order, which uh, is the same as the qualifying one as I basically do this the same for race pace, but the race pace doesn't affect the race results uh, 100%. I'm gonna get to that later. Basically, getting the race pace order, doing the same as uh, the RNG plus pace modifier for the race order, and uh, basically the top driver and everyone that's within two tenths of uh, the top driver or the fastest driver have a chance of getting the fastest lap. Uh, obviously, those drivers who are 0.15 seconds off in the race space have I think it should be like 25% uh, chance off 
the Tom driver getting the, the passive lobby. It's essentially, uh, it varies how many from how many drivers are in the two tens area. Basically, if there are like only two drivers, uh, top driver is 100% chance, and let's say zero zero. 0.15 seconds off is the other, another driver they have a 25% chance of getting in and this one has 100% so essentially there's a 125% chance but I'm gonna uh, it's obviously getting to normal because 125% uh, uh, is exceeding an amount of actual 100% but uh, this is just gonna lower down uh, depending on how much how many drivers are here uh, getting to the standard race process, basically the same thing as for qualifying RNG plus pace mode, for everything was explained already. Um, there we go to the averaging, which essentially uh, gets our us the final race results. Obviously, after all the reliability issues, drivers, everything applied, we take the race pace order with the damages, with everything like this. Get out the average of the race pace order and the quality order, and we get averages for every single driver. We sort them out and the drivers with the with the best number. Uh, it's the, essentially which is the lowest number. Is uh, for example, if Max gets first and in race pace and pole position, he has the number one, so should get should get the win unless something uh, something like this happens. Um, yeah, if multiple drivers get the same number, for example, if uh, let's say Ocon and Gasly, Ocon qualifies seven, finishes P8, and uh, Gasly uh, qualifies P7 and finishes P8, and Ocon uh, qualifies P8 and finishes P7, they have the exact same average of 7.5, but Gasly qualified ahead, so his driver ahead. This applies for only the drivers with the same number uh, here. Obviously, this averaging is going to differ from circuit to circuit, so because some circuits are easier to overtake on, like uh, with, uh, for example, Spa or whatever, uh, Austria, I don't know. And there are uh, circuits which are uh, which are not the best for racing, for example, Monaco. Obviously, the quality order is going to matter uh, much more. This is a pretty sad number of how much the quality order or the average race pace order matters. For example, Monaco is probably going to be uh, quality order 95 and race pace order uh, 5%. So basically, we get the average of those and multiplying them by the by the chance of this preset, a preset amount of chance by the circuit itself. So basically, if you qualify well, well in Monaco, uh, the race pace order doesn't matter too much for you. So if there's a chaos in Monaco, like I explained earlier, that can happen, and, uh, and a lot of things can happen in quality stations if you qualify like whatever uh, P4 in Haas, you have a big chance of staying in the top five, for example. Uh, after this, obviously there are if there are no like crazy things happening in the in the race itself. Um, we're going to the last section, VSC, we have affecting every single driver if it happens in the race. There's a position change uh, number from zero, from minus two positions to plus two positions for every single driver. So uh, we're gonna I'm gonna run through every single driver from the lowest to the highest, and essentially be switching their positions by the position change. Same thing for our safety car that is an increased chance minus 3 to plus 3 and red flag has a minus 4 to plus 4. There's also a chance of fixing damage that I talked about earlier. If you're getting damage from a driver error or another driver's driver error, you there's a chance of fixing that in the BSC safety car or flag. Red flag having 100% chance because essentially you're stopping in the pits and mechanics can change your entire car. So that's the best scenario for you having damage. But still, the damage does affect the driver even if it's getting fixed but it's only 50% so if you get a damage of 0.4 seconds the damage getting fixed in a red fly and then you have 0.2 second debuff so not bad not that bad and I think that's about it for the entire simulation obviously there are a lot of uh, other processes and other uh, 
there's a lot of work put into this that I, that I worked on over the years and hopefully gonna be interesting for you and give us some content before the season starts obviously uh, there's a kind of a drought of F1 content in the winter break so obviously this is gonna be an attempt to kind of fill that gap at least on my channel obviously uh, the channel is not yet uh, very recognized by the F1 community. I was an uh, uh, MCC content creator. Uh, if you just know my, me by F1, you probably don't know what MCC is. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I just started with F1 content uh, last year, like I think the during the midpoint of the season, and now I'm fully switching to F1 plus variety, depending on how I feel like. So F1 is going to be my priority doing these simulations obviously predictions are gonna go be for the next season as well I think one is gonna be in January uh, before the preseason test, pre testing and one is gonna be just after preseason testing before the Bahrain GP and obviously there are gonna be predictions for the Bahrain GP itself so a lot of content waiting obviously it's gonna be my main aim, main aim during this winter break to get out at least one per two days, uh, one of these Grand Prix. Um, yeah, hopefully you enjoy it, and I'm, uh, hopefully I'll have a lot of fun doing it because I'm very excited for it as well. Yeah, if you watched till this moment, thank you for watching, and yeah, see you soon. See ya.